Now let's take a look at the changes to the Pro Channel. This is another addition in the form of a tape emulator, and the Quad Curve EQ now has a fly-out zoom window complete with metering and spectrum analyzer. Press Ctrl plus I to open the Pro Channel in the inspector, or click on the Show Pro Channel icon in the console view. The standard EQ display now has larger, easier to read parameter displays, and to open the new zoom window, click on the double right arrows in the EQ module header. The flyout opens. Let's take a closer look. This window will auto close if you tweak other Pro Channel modules or change track focus, but it can be pinned open. To do that, click on the pin icon in the zoom window header and click on it again to unpin it. Toward the top is the main display area. This shows a post processing spectrum display with low frequencies on the left and higher frequencies towards the right. The frequency scale marks and a keyboard graphic to indicate note and frequency reference points. The vertical scales decibel centered at 0 dB are represented by the horizontal center line. There are scale indicators at either end. The exact frequency and level position of the cursor is shown in the bottom right hand corner. The current cumulative EQ curve is shown by a solid white line, while individual EQ bands are shown as coloured nodes and their individual effect using shaded colour areas. We'll look at adjusting the EQ in this display shortly. On the far left is an input meter which indicates incoming audio levels. In the centre, a post-processing spectrum analysis display, and toward the far right, an output meter that shows levels post-processing. Above the output meter is the on-off switch. Beneath the main display are the controls, the mode selection buttons and the left hands. Pure is a clean, transparent type with soft, gentle curves and is suitable for use on buses and mastering or any time you need a general purpose EQ. The E-Type setting mimics a vintage hardware unit and has constant Q, meaning the Q does not change with gain level settings. This makes it a very clinical EQ, useful for emphasising or cutting specific frequency ranges. It also makes it less suitable for more general changes as you may need to adjust the Q when changing gain to keep the desired effect. The G-Type is modelled on a more modern type of EQ. The Q response is dynamic or proportional, meaning that the Q is reduced as the level increases. This means that a wider band is affected at lower gain settings and the result is a more gentle curve. The hybrid type has what is known as an asymmetrical filter. It has a wide Q response when boosting, but narrow when cutting. This makes it useful for gentle boosting while still being able to make more clinical cuts. The EQ bands consist of a high and low pass filter with controls for adjusting frequency and slope. There are four frequency adjustable peak filters with adjustable Q, and two of them can be switched to the shelf mode, making this a very versatile EQ which is light on resources as well as ergonomic. All of the bands are switchable. To the right of the controls is the gloss switch which adds a filter to the high end to add a smooth presence. As mentioned earlier, the peak filters of the EQ can be controlled from the plot window. Bands can be turned on and off by left clicking on the node and adjusted for frequency again by click dragging horizontally and vertically respectively. Q is adjusted by holding down the ALT key and click dragging up and down. A new addition to the Pro Channel is the Tape Emulator module. Like all modules, this can be inserted or replace a module using the Pro Channel right-click menu. Tape emulators are a processor used in the digital world to recreate some of the warmth and punch associated with analog tape being saturated by high levels. In the digital world, the audio is very clinical and clean, and it isn't possible to saturate as it is in the analog world when levels approach clipping. If levels are driven to clipping levels in the digital world, the result is an unpleasant distortion. In the analog world, the results are much more pleasing and was used to great effect by engineers to enhance tracks. The Pro Channel Tape Emulator helps us to recreate that character, and better still, we can pick and choose what tracks it's used on. Let's take a look. Along the top is the usual Pro Channel Module Clip Indicator, which can be used to identify any clipping within the Pro Channel chain. Next to that is the on-off switch for switching the module on or off. The meters at the top indicate levels and are switchable from peak to RMS. The noise parameter adjusts the level of simulated tape hiss. The record level control can be used to add input gain. This increases the amount of saturation. 
the playback level is used to increase game post-processing at the output stage. There is a link button between these two controls to link them together. If that is active, increasing one will decrease the other, maintaining a steady level while still adjusting the amount of saturation. The tape speed control adjusts simulated tape speed which in turn affects the tone of the compression. The slower speed reduces higher frequencies producing a warmer tone. The standard 15 inch per second has a faster attack time and therefore quicker compression. The bias control also affects tone. Tape doesn't respond as well to low level signals as it does higher ones and the bias control improves the tape response. The result is less low and mid frequency distortion. The oversetting interacts with the noise control and reduces distortion in low and mid frequencies especially on sibilant sounds. Normal leaves the distortion as it would normally be for the chosen tape settings at the relevant levels. And that's the new tape emulator, an X3 edition to the Pro Channel.